Hi everybody, this is Oksana. Today we're making a fun Halloween pendant. This is a witch's broom pendant and it uses all round wires. It uses two sizes of round wire and then it uses this keonite stone here which kind of resembles the bristles of a broom so it's perfect for this project. If you're new to my channel, I make wire wrapping videos which I post every weekend and if you enjoy this video i hope you will leave me a like so let's get started making this pendant the wire that we're going to be using in this video is round wire and we're going to be using two sizes this is the 18 gauge it's a thicker size here and the other one is 24 gauge they are both dead soft copper wires from riogrand.com the tools needed are wire cutters to cut the wire, mine are Swanstrom brand, and then round nose pliers and regular pliers. Mine are the Lindstrom brand and my regular pliers are called RX7890 and the round nose ones are RX7590. The stone used in this video is a raw keonite it looks like this. Normally the keonite is a black color, but this has been coated with titanium, which is why it has this kind of shiny appearance to it. But basically these stones kind of resemble the bristles of a broom, so they work well for this. You can find this on Etsy, which is where I got it from. And they come in an assortment of kind of shapes and sizes, so you can do this with various ones. Mine is a little bit more than an inch and a half, probably about 40 millimeters here. And we're gonna start by cutting ourselves one piece of the 18 gauge wire. This is all we're gonna need for the 18 gauge wire, just this one piece, oops. And it measures four inches long. Now, if your stone is larger, you might have to cut yourself a longer piece of wire. If you want your broom to have a longer handle, because maybe you want to put a lot of kinks and curves and bends in it, you can cut yourself a slightly larger piece of wire. But this should be fine for the project here. So I am going to make a little loop at the top of this wire, and that is going to be my bail. So I'm making a bend here. Let me measure it for you. It's an inch long and I am going to curve it now around my round nose pliers. This is what we needed the round nose pliers for. And this is the little loop that our necklace is going to go through. Feel free to make it bigger or smaller. It's up to you what you kind of prefer, but this is good enough for me. So I'm now gonna take this little end and I'm gonna curve it around, basically just wrapping it around here. And just pressing that down, you can cut off the little bit of it here or you can just press that down. Just depends on how much wire you have left here. I'm just gonna trim that. And now I'm just gonna come in here and press on that little wire end with my pliers just to make sure it's not sticking out and it's just kind of pressed down. And then I'm gonna feel it with my finger to make sure it's not sharp or sticking out. And my little bail, just gonna flatten it a little bit with my pliers as well. So the front is gonna be the part that doesn't have the little wire end. We want a wire end to be in the back, and not visible. This is going to be the top portion. So if you want your broom to kind of have some kinks and curves, feel free to do that just with your fingers. You can also take your stone and kind of take a look of how that looks all together. Also, you want to decide 
where you want your stone positioned. Do you want this to be tall broom, a short broom? You know, what looks the right size to you? So to me, I'm thinking this looks good. So I'm just gonna note that by looking here on the back and I'm just gonna bend this wire a little bit like this. This way I know where I want it to end. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just show you while I'm holding it here, is I'm gonna trim this wire and make a little loop here with the end of the wire. So I'm just gonna trim it. And you can curve this with just your normal pliers here, just bend it. Or if you want it to be kind of a more perfect circular shape, you can use your round nose pliers. But you wanna use the wider part and make a larger circle because this is gonna come in handy later. We're gonna be using it to attach some of our wires too, so you don't want it to be like a super tiny little circle. So now I'm gonna check one more time. I'm gonna look at the back of my stone. So that's what it will look like. And now you want to hammer this for strength. This is optional if you don't have the tools to hammer, that's okay, but if you do, it'll just give it a little bit extra strength. So the tools needed to hammer are an iron block. I just got this from a craft store a long time ago and a chasing hammer. Chasing hammer has a flat side. It's a jewelry hammer. And then it also has this side as well, but we're just gonna be using the flat side. So you just wanna position your little broom handle like this because the bale obviously sticks out this way. So we can just hold it and hammer this whole portion. When you hammer it, it gives it kind of a flatter look and it also makes it more firm and you can hammer your bale as well by putting it like this and hammering just this portion. I can't really do that in the air here. So you don't wanna hold everything in the air like I am. I'm just doing it so you can see it on camera, but you just wanna put this on the ground and do this on the ground. So I'm just gonna hammer this off camera. Now we're going to cut ourselves two pieces of the 24 gauge round wire. And these need to be very long. So we are just going to measure them here. 27 inches long. Now we're going to fold them in half, both of them, so you know where the middle of them is. Okay, now we're gonna use one at a time here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put one end of it through the bale. So this is the front. So I'm gonna have this in the back. So I'm just gonna pinch it as tight as I can here. It's just a way to attach it. So what I'm gonna do is take it and start wrapping it around the handle. And you can wrap it tighter, but I like to leave these little gaps like this and this is gonna add some texture. And when we do the other wire, it's gonna give it kind of a woven effect to like the handle of the broom is woven out of smaller wires, even though we're just wrapping them around. So you wanna do this not completely all the way down because remember we have our stone sitting here. So let's grab our stone and see how we were gonna position it. Like that. So when your stone starts, that's when you want to stop wrapping this around. 
And now we're going to do the other wire. So we're just going to grab it and put it through as well. And again, just kind of pinch it tight. And now we're going to wrap it in the other direction. So kind of crisscrossing our original little wraps that we made. And don't worry if this is not perfect because this is meant to be like a raggedy old broom. So it's totally fine if all of these are like not symmetrical or proportional. So I'm just wrapping it in the other direction, kind of crisscrossing my previous wraps. This is the look. Once you oxidize it, that brings out that texture and dimension and it'll kind of look like it's a woven handle like this. All right, so I'm just gonna get down here to the same spot as my other wires, so like this. Now I'm gonna take my stone and I'm gonna position it like this. And I'm gonna continue with these wires here that are on the left. So to do that, I'm gonna move the wires on the right just slightly up to temporarily get them out of my way. So what I'm gonna do is take these wires. They're kind of going in this direction if I were to continue to wrap them. So I'm just gonna continue with the direction that they're going in and I'm gonna start wrapping them around my stone. So this is a little tricky because I'm pressing down here on this wire on the back and I'm pressing on the stone trying to keep it all together. If I let go, the stone is going to fall out. The stone is not secure. So for this next portion, for quite a bit of time, you're gonna be holding the stone because it's not gonna be secure. So we're wrapping it around until you are satisfied with how much of this top portion you want to be wrapped. And a good stopping point is when you start getting to this little loop here. What I like to do is just wrap around the loop. So I'm just going to raise the loop slightly with my pliers so that I can get these wires around it. And you can do one wire at a time if you want. So I've pulled them around and now I'm gonna have them go down and I'm gonna trim them so that I can tuck away these little ends here. Point the ends down and just kind of tuck them down in there. This loop, try to kind of position it more flat against the back here. Now I would still hold the stone at this point. If it comes out, you can put it back in, but there's a big risk if you just take it out and leave it out while you do this next portion. There's a risk that this is gonna get smushed and misshaped. So I personally prefer to hold my stone in here to reduce that risk. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna be working on these two wires and we are going to twist them, whichever kind of direction is more comfortable for you to twist. Basically just crisscross them and start twisting them together like this. And we're gonna do this for a while because we need this twisted portion to be long. So 
I'm just going to do this off camera, but all I'm doing is just one little bit at a time, just giving it a careful little twist here, trying to keep these wires equidistant from each other so that the twist is even. If one of these wires kind of becomes more straight like this, then what's going to happen is this wire is going to start coiling around the other wire instead of getting a nice even twist. But even if that happens, I think it's not a big deal for this particular project because a witch's broom is meant to look kind of ragged and, I don't know, maybe like worn. So it's okay if everything is not perfect and symmetrical and all that stuff. It kind of goes with the look of the broom. So I'm just going to do this a little bit longer off camera. All right, I don't know if this is long enough, but we can start bending it to see. So the way that these wires are going is they're wrapping around in this direction. So you want to follow along that direction because if you go with the other direction, it's just going to unravel them there at the top. So we're following it along. And that brings us here onto the front. So here is where you have some um, leeway of what you do. So every stone is a little bit different. Basically we have to wrap this twisted wire around the stone to trap it in place. If you wrap it just around the narrow portion up here, it's not going to trap, it's still going to slide out. You have to wrap it somewhere here around the bottom. So however your stone is, you kind of have to look at the shape of your stone and work with that. So for me, I'm just bending it here. I bent it all the way around and I'm bending it here and then there's like a little gap, I guess, right here at the tip. And I'm bending it to the back so I kind of trapped the bottom there. So here's what mine looks like. And now I just have to keep twisting my wire just a little bit more because I ultimately want to get it to up here to this loop and attach it to this loop. So I'm just going to keep twisting it a little bit longer off camera. All right, so now this is the back. This is our wire. You can just kind of bring it up here, but I want to wrap it around a little bit more. So I'm going to curve it onto the front. It's going to form this little crisscross up here. Then I'm going to come this way and it almost perfectly reaches my little loop. It just needs like two more little twists. There we go. And now we've reached the loop. And here's how I like to attach these wires. So I'm going to have them go under and I'm going to separate them. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to wrap them around. So I'm going to start with this wire here. I'm just kind of feeding it through the loop so that I get a nice tight little wrap. And then this wire, I'm gonna wrap it around up here. of feeding it through and then pulling it tight. So they both have one little wrap and then if you kind of pull on your broom handle you'll see that it has the tiny bit of movement but the stone is secure nothing's gonna fall out so you can either finish wrapping these little wires around a few times and then trim them and tuck them away or if this little bit of movement bothers you and you want to try to stabilize it more, what you can do is this. So I'm going to wrap this wire until I get it down to the bottom here and then I'm going to wrap this wire at least one more time and now they are closer to each other. So now that they are near each other again, we can twist them again. 
So we've brought them back together. And the purpose of doing that is we're going to attach them one more time so that this little movement gets kind of more locked into place by attaching this little loop down to these wires. So once we get down to these wires, we're going to take one wire at a time and we're going to wrap around. So I'm doing this wire first and kind of pulling it, trying to make a nice tight attachment to kind of stabilize any movement that the broom has up top. All right, so that was about three wraps and now I'm going to trim that. Then I'm gonna take this little wire end, I'm gonna tuck it underneath, press down on it to hide it away. Now we have this wire here. I'm gonna take this wire. I am going to wrap it around this little X here, this little crisscross portion. So here you can see it going underneath and then coming through this other end. So I'm just gonna grab it and I'm just gonna pull to just really have it tight right here. And now the movement has stopped because it's attached here. So what I'm gonna do now is just whatever wire is easiest. This one is easiest for me to wrap around because there's a little gap here so I can easily fit my wire underneath it, but just whatever's easier for you. In your situation, just wrap it around a few times. About three or four times just to attach it. And then once you've made that attachment, we're just gonna trim. Take the little wire end, point it downwards, and push it away under there. So now it is all attached. You want to take one final look to make sure that your bail is centered. You can always adjust a little, little bit if it got turned into any one direction. So here is the broom, and there's multiple ways to wear it. So you can just wear it like this through the bail, just hanging straight down. Or you can make a choker out of it by taking this little bail portion, just bending it up slightly, attaching a chain. The chain's gonna go around your neck and then you can take a little jump ring and attach it just somewhere here or even here, wherever you can get a jump ring attached, slide it underneath and attach your chain and then it's going to hang like this across if you prefer that and if you have a really tiny stone and you can make a tiny little broom then you can do that same thing that I just showed you and it could be a bracelet this one's too big to be a bracelet but if it was smaller you would bend it slightly kind of around the shape of your wrist attach a chain to one end Attach a jump ring to the other so the chain can go all the way around. And that would be another way to wear this. So here it is here, just on a cord necklace. And I know I ended up with kind of a crisscross here, but you can also make swirls with this wire. You can add beads to it or something or charms to kind of get different looks with this broom. But this is the final piece. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.